is that there's still a lot of stuff in here from college. Rather than waste a perfectly good opportunity to make a video, here we are. I am going to record my reaction as I look at the things I used to have hanging up in my dorm rooms for four years in college. Most of the things in here are Christian things that I had either made Oh, let's ass up this opponent. We have some song Me and my long arms. from some Christian songs that I really liked. I printed these out my freshman year. I have the lyrics to Beautiful Things by Gunger. The spit, some pretty spit, spit. decorations I drew Ooh. in the background. I have spit. Hope is bringing up from this. Get that damn bitch out, out of here. I'm taking it, taking my poison dinner. Man, this video sucks. Family situation prior to going to college. Well, 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 college. well I love. She's a smelly shelly cushy vibe. And nothing wrong with her name. Pad of with newspaper. Pizza. I got this my freshman year of college spit, in my residence spit, hall. Spit. I actually never used pit, the smelly shelly cushy vibe. With spit, smelly shelly cushy vibe. With spit, spit, spit. Send him their deepest needs by the tens of thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, too. But how many of those prayer requests does televangelist Ken Copeland actually spit. see? Some insiders say 0%. Friendship investigates. This is News 8 Now. It's time to ask him finished. up. Good evening. This is your high It's time to ask you up. To ask you up. To ask you up. It's time to ask you up. It's time to ask you up. It's time to ask you up, to ask you up, to ask you up. It's time to ask you, ask you up. They say it's time for the truth to come out. News 8's Brett Ship has been investigating the Copeland ministry, and he joins us now with the text, Brett. Gloria, John, the lifeblood of the Copeland ministry operations is tens of thousands of tax dollars that roll in on a mail truck every day. Don't deal, won't. Most of that money is sent in along with personal prayer requests that are processed by I'll ask that bishop up. the ministry. While the Copelands you only have no trouble you only spending the money inside inevitable. the envelopes, how I'm many of those prayer you requests up. do they really see? Tonight, News 8 investigates. Mm, I just eared your rip. Ha, 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 ha. I'll uh, ask him that night. Reported on the private use of Copeland Ministries twenty million dollar jet. I'll uh, ask him up. Trips made to a ski resort and an exotic game hunting ranch. <laughs> but the real turbulence for the Copeland. I'll uh, ask one of those pieces up. Don't, don't think I won't. His Eagle Mountain Church and ministry headquarters. I know what he's gonna do. From former employees who tell News Eight. Shout amen, somebody. The Get that damn bitch out of TV. here. So I can ask him up. I ain't taking this. You're gonna, you gonna lose life. that piece. We were treated like galley slaves. In my eyes, you're gonna lose that damn piece. You understand me? Your mentality placed on people that work there. Just three former Copeland Ministry employees speaking out about the disappointment of discovering Man, I'm getting so what sick and tired of this shit. I started going to church there in 1994. Among them. Jeff Spradlin, who says he grew up admiring the Copelands and was excited to get a job working. Ass up, brother. Days, I started realizing this was a huge mistake. 
For nearly two years, Brown worked in the mail processing center where prayer request envelopes stuffed with cash would arrive every morning. He says a group of ministers, not the Copelands, would pray over the unopened envelopes. But Spradlin says he and other mail processors were the only ones who actually read the requests. Oh, ask them up! Uh, they're getting this paperwork all the day and going... Oh, oh ask them up! Don't see a word of this. How many of these prayer requests, to your knowledge, do Kenneth and Gloria Copeland see? Man, let's start it again. None that I know of. I'm this asking up this piece. This also processed prayer requests and sent return letters crafted to give the look of a personal response. In fact, the ministry recently bought a new high-tech printer, which according to the manufacturer, gives Copeland a finished document that looks 100% personalized. Amen! They think when they get that letter back that someone has actually prayed. Is that they misleading? Don't understand that that was actually just processed into a computer. Do you think that that is Don't you dare try to ask that queen up! For six months. I'll ask her Nathan up! Well says he, not Copeland, read the prison ministry prayer requests. There was no actual human contact with that letter besides my eyes. But that's okay. He gets 10,000 letters a week. But admit that. Don't imply that you read these personally when you don't. Hallelujah! The former employees we spoke to also say their spirits sank after learning Kenneth and Gloria have little, if any, contact with their faithful followers. That's the one time I saw the man was at the Christmas party. I uh, was in an elevator with Gloria once. And they had little, if any, contact with their 500 employees. And it was an unwritten law that if Kenneth or Gloria walked to the office, you don't see them, you don't speak to them. Former employees we talk to say when the Copelands are not on the road, they spend their days inside of their 18,000 square foot parsonage on the shores of Eagle Mountain Lake, surrounded by hundreds of acres of range and ranch land, not far from their tennis courts Let's and some, some, some the some of these poems. could get to Copeland was to slip past his backstage security uh, ask him up. a prayer rally at a public park in Granbury. Ms. Copeland, Brett Ship with Channel 8 News, can we talk to you? Sure. Great. But his tenor changed once we asked the question, does he personally read and pray over his partner's prayer requests? Do you personally pray over your prayer requests that you get? Oh, ask them up! You receive them. Yes. You do? When do you see When do you see your prayer requests? Well, that is between me and my partner. Man, he thought he had me. told us his ministry is so large that he has to have a prayer team help but I pulled him victory out of the jaws of defeat, the feet, and he pulled the feet out of the jaws of victory. And I asked him up like a pro. I asked him up! How much of this mail and correspondence they see and or pray over? Zero percent. Zero. Zero. And then on your weekends, you're out preaching all over the world, you need a jet. That's horseshit. That's horseshit, Kenneth Copeland. Staff because he and Gloria are private people who are on the road preaching much of the time. And as for our questions of him... You don't want to talk about the productive side of the ministry. You just want to run me down. You want to, you want to tear down everything you can. And I don't, I don't understand that. But Spradlin says what he and the others want Copeland to understand is that it's not about tearing a ministry down, but for the first time, exposing the truth this is about coming to terms with it understanding what what i went through and that this isn't god we are already hearing from devoted copeland followers upset that we're making no mention of the ministry's positive spiritual message that the copeland spread around the world no one is criticizing yeah. that message just raising False questions positives. about whether kenneth Gloria Cure your baldness by rubbing your head. And you wake up the next, next morning more bald than you were the before because you rubbed that, you rubbed, right. you rubbed the, you rubbed your, some of your hair out. I'm fixing to ask that whore up. So a week ago I released a reaction video of me reacting to a Mormon reaction uh, ask her to up. episode about Mormonism. I, only I will ask that whore up. Because it was pretty long, so I figured I'd do part two. These parts can be watched in any order. They're completely independent from each other. So if you haven't seen part one, then don't sweat it. Give it a watch after this one if you're interested. Okay, with all that being said, let's get into it. 
I'll ask that night up. I'll ask him up. The last one was laying the groundwork for the belief system. This chick got into whether or not the South Park episode was quote unquote correct about a lot of stuff. For the most part, I think she agreed that the episode was correct about most things. In reality, it was spot on about basically everything. South Park is famous for addressing I'll ask that whore up. They hit Scientology too. And guess what? The Scientologists felt like they unfairly represented it, just like the Mormons did, because they didn't put the church's framing on it. They provided factual information from an outsider's perspective. These groups only exist because of information control. If the members knew the real factual information about their history, what South Park provided, Come on. and it wasn't dishonest, why does this thing go so damn way, slow? Then the group wouldn't even exist. That goes for the Mormon Church, Scientology, which, as I said, was covered by South Park. Jehovah's Maybe I need Witnesses, to shrink my picture down. Any other cult out there. They only survive because of information control, narrative building. People would I will see ask that girl, otherwise. brother up. Group, South Park is through laying the ground. I'll ask them up. Which everybody can pretty I'll much agree ask on. Up. And they're ready to start talking about the stuff that the group doesn't want talked about. We'll get to hear the real story of the origins of the Mormon church and get the church's narrative on it from this chick afterward. So in the last clip, Joseph Smith talked about how he was visited I'll by ask that night up. And the angel told him he buried some golden plates in the ground, which is basically a New Testament of Jesus Christ. And what do you know? It just so happened to be right near where Joseph Smith lived. What are the chances? Crazy. With all that being said, let's continue this story. So I went out to the woods. I dug around all morning where the angel had told me to look. Hmm. Maybe there isn't. He didn't have to dig around all morning, guys. The angel directed him where he should go. And <laughs> he saw it in, a, in, a, in his dream the night before. <laughs> Did he? Wait a tick. What's this? Wow. Inside the stone box, I found the magical seer stones. I found four gold plates written in strange writing. This must be the gospel that Jesus told the Nephites. Well, they were the most amazing things I'd ever gazed upon. Wolf, so where are they? Where are what? The gold plates and the seer stones, where are they? Oh, oh, well, I was not allowed to take them. This should be your first red flag. Let's see them. You can keep it in your hand the whole time. I don't even have to touch it. Just hold it out in front of me so I can see it and we'll call it square. But there's always a convenient reason why nobody else can see it. Let's continue. You see, after I found the plates, the angel Moroni appeared to me again and said that I'm not allowed to show the plates or the seer to anybody. Because first I must translate what's written on the plates into English. So you can all Stupid. Even though no, 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 even so her explanation for why nobody was allowed to see the plates is people did that see the plates, like eight people. What she's ignoring is the fact that there was a massive, giant controversy at the time. People refused to believe him that the plates were real. It seemed like a grift. If this is all true, then just show us the fucking plates. Seriously, what's the big deal? So he got some of his cousins and friends to sign a piece of paper that said, yep, I saw them. They're completely and totally 100% legit. I swear. I'm sorry, that's just not good enough for me. It shouldn't be good enough for anybody. This controversy shouldn't have existed at all. Photography existed around that time. The earliest existing photograph was 1826. This was happening in the 1820s. People could paint, at least. The fact that this was a controversy at all is pushing my eyebrows all the way to the back of my head. So that's her explanation. Joseph Smith got some of his friends and family members to tell people that they got to see them. But if that's not a good enough explanation for you... Okay, and also people I'll were really trying to steal shit. the gold plates too from Joseph Smith and I'll like trying to kill them and steal them. 
So yeah, there was a reason he didn't just show them to everybody. <laughs> also, the Urim and Thummim, or the seer stones that they're talking about, and, um, were also mentioned in the Bible. They just aren't mentioned, like, what exactly they're for. But if you go back to the Sons of Aaron, um, yeah, it talks about them in the Bible as well. So. so people were supposedly trying to steal them from him. What's that have to do with anything? He could still show them to everybody. Doesn't mean he has to tell anybody where he stores them. The fact that nobody had ever seen them was a massively controversial thing at the time. Not now, then. So why didn't he just bring them out to the public, show everybody, and then put them back in hiding if people were trying to take them? I'm sorry, this just isn't a valid explanation for me. At all. And it shouldn't be for you either. As far as the seer stones being mentioned in the Bible goes, so what? I have my doubts that the Bible ever mentioned the seer stones, but even if it did, I'm how does that fuck prove this shit. anything at all? Let's it's rematching. Small logical steps through this. We know Joseph Smith had a copy of the Bible. Hypothetically, let's say the Bible specifically mentions a stone by name. If those two premises are true, then we can conclude that Joseph Smith used the names he saw in the Bible to add credibility to his story. I'm not connecting the dots on this. Let's continue. Sharon, did you know this guy Joseph Smith found a New Testament to the Bible buried here in America? What are you talking about? Well, it's just that... The Harrisons are really nice people, and you should see how loving and together their family is. I, I think there's something to that religion. That's what they made me think, too. No, <laughs> right? That doesn't. From now on, our family is Mormon. <laughs> FYI, that's part of behavior control. You'll find most cults have very mild-mannered, artificially happy, and for lack of a better term, tame members. That's called a cult personality. They program it in with a system of rewards and punishments. Jehovah's Witnesses do it, Mormons do it, Heaven's Gate did it, People's Temple did it. It's one of the factors that defines a cult in the first place. Replacing somebody's authentic identity... Look at this whore do that. The Together their family is... I Look at this whore. That's what they made me think, too. No, right? That doesn't. From now on, our family is Mormon. <laughs> FYI, that's... Oh, I want, you, I want you to see that no whore fight. give the thumbs up. Our family is Mormon. <laughs> FYI, that's part of She's a whore. You'll find most cults have very mild-mannered, artificially happy, and for lack Deluded of a better term, automaton. members. That's called a cult personality. They program it in with a system of rewards and punishments. Jehovah's Witnesses do it, Mormons Deluded do it, automaton, did bitch. it, People's Temple did it. It's one of the factors that defines the cult in the first whore. place. Replacing somebody's with authentic Uzi identity with a cult identity. With the fact that they change your personality to be more submissive should not be a reason for you to join with any her group. if what they say is spin. untrue or inaccurate, then that should automatically disqualify them as a group you'd consider joining. With there are plenty of groups out with there who will program a cult personality into you. It doesn't have to be the Mormon church. You remember Martin Harris, the rich man who wrote down what Joseph Smith read out of the hat? Yeah. See, after he was done, he took some of the pages of what would become the Book of Mormon. Oh, oh hell no, you're not going to pull that shit on me. To his wife. Dum, 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 dum. Stupid. Dum 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 dum. Stupid. I'll ask up that whore. Martin, how do you know he isn't just making stuff up and pretending he's translating off golden plates? You see, there is smart, 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 smart. Why would he make it? Get that damn bitch the hell out of here. I'll ask him up. Lucy Harris, smart, 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 smart. Martin Harris, dumb. Martin Harris, stupid. So the whole premise here is that this guy, Martin Harris, no, you're not gonna ask up my king. Claiming he was Hell no, you're book. not gonna ask him uh, mind, Martin Harris never saw the golden plates either. This actually was very smart. If he really was reading from a book, he should be I'm able to, to ask up your rook. No problem, right? And it should I'll be an exact up. match. Shouldn't differ at all, even by a single word. Let's hear the Mormon explanation for the problem. Okay, so they pretty much got the story wrong here. Um, they were good until this point, but what actually happened is um, Martin Harris wanted to I'll show his who? wife and his family Horse up. Some of the translated pages so that we could prove them, like, what they were doing, because they were kind of upset that he was spending all his time, and they didn't really know on what. Get that so, horse out Martin of here! Martin went to Joseph and asked him um, if he could bring some of these pages home to his family, and so Joseph went and asked God, and God told him no. And then once again, Martin asked Joseph, "Well, can you ask again?" And God said no. Well, 
Martin kept bugging him, and because his family kept bugging him as well. And so Joseph asked God the third time, and God said, okay, um, you can show only a select people these translated pages, which was Martin's wife and his family. Okay, hang on, let me get this straight. So Martin's family didn't know what he was spending all his time doing, and instead of just telling them, I'm helping Wait, Joseph I'm Smith a, write I'll a book, ask he had up. to ask Joseph Smith to ask God ask to show the pages up. of the book to his wife. He asked well, three I'll different ask times, that. and in all knowing all <laughs> stuff of course, if you realizing lose that, that the pages would be not, lost, I'll changed ask up his that. mind after being pestered about it for the third time and said, sure, you can take these pages and show them to people. And since I'm God, I know this is going to end badly, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes anyway. Man, did, did he hear one of my So Martin took the pages and showed them to his wife Damn. and his family, but then he also ended up showing them to some other people. And then they were eventually lost as well. Then a few weeks went by and Martin Harris didn't return because he was so upset that he had lost the pages. And Joseph had received a vision that actually the pages had been stolen by some really bad people. Once again, they were trying to steal the place and things like that. And they ended up changing the translation that Joseph had already done. So that way then, if Joseph translated that section again, they could be like, oh, it's wrong. And technically prove that Joseph was incorrect with his translating. Wait a Stupid. vision that somebody changed the translations? Is there literally any evidence that this happened at all? I will take anything other than Joseph Smith saw it in a vision. So what ended up happening is um, God actually told Joseph, don't even translate that stuff again because an abridged, ver uh, an abridged version has actually been made in the next book. Yes, he is so mad that he will never let me translate from the plate of Lehi again. Sure. He said we must now translate from the plate of Nephi. So it won't be the same basic story, but written a little differently. Get that damn whore really? out of here. Really? You buy this? There are only Get two that types damn of people who would seriously buy this story. Ass out for Suckers a fucking and brainwashed dinner. people. Even the church's framing, which this chick is giving us, is barely I'll better than the official up. story. Take a step back and think about this. This is completely I'll absurd. So what cool. happened in the Book of Mormon um, is just like the Bible, how the Bible has different books from different prophets in, in the ancient times. The Book of Mormon, same thing, it's written by different ancient prophets. So the books, the names of these individual oh, books inside the Book of Mormon have names like Nephi and Moroni and things like that. And um, so... Lehi was actually Nephi's dad, and Lehi wrote down stuff first, and then Nephi wrote down actually an abridged version of what his dad wrote. So that is why what Joseph Smith ended up translating was legit just the same. So that's why God's like, don't bother translating anymore because that's not even really needed. So, there you go. Okay, now that's fascinating. First of all, I just want to point out that the gospel writers weren't you actually knew that whore, your ass is grass. That's just what the books were named. Also, I want to point out that the Gospels all differ heavily on the facts. They aren't abridged versions of each other. It's not the same at all. And it's awfully convenient for Joseph Smith to suddenly get a vision from God telling him not to translate that book again, but just to write an abridged version of it. This is completely absurd, and anybody of sound mind and outside of undue influence can see that. But I find it extra interesting that she said this part here. So that's why God's like, don't bother translating anymore, because that's what not even really needed. So Shit. It's not really needed? Why was he having him translate it in the first place then? Would any other Christian say that the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke aren't really needed because the book of John covers it all? Don't even bother reading the other three. It's pointless. You get the same story from oh, John. That's completely that absurd and very clearly looks like an excuse from Joseph Smith to cover up his mistake. Wait, Mormons actually know this story and they still believe Joseph Smith was a prophet? Well sure, the story proves it, doesn't it? No, it proves he did make it all up. Are you blind? Yep, that's pretty on point. Well, sin. It's because that's not the real story. <laughs> you mean the church approved sin on the real story. It's not much better. What we honestly tell people is that you can actually pray and ask God if it's true. I mean, who better tell you than God himself? If there's any evidence of this at all outside of it's just a feeling that God placed in my heart, then I imagine she would have given it to us at some point in this video. Now, I understand that the feeling you have in your heart has given you complete and total confidence that this is true, but it's done the exact same thing for the Muslim, or the Buddhist, or the Jehovah's Witness, or the Catholic. Give me something I can take back to them to prove that you are more correct than they are, and we'll go from there. Don't bother telling me what I, what I believe and why my religion's wrong, because you're just wasting your time and your breath, buddy. I'm not doing this for your benefit, I'm doing this for other people's benefit, who might stumble across your video and think what you said was accurate or factual. 
Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. It's how I continue working regardless of what's going on with YouTube any given week. Also, check out my Etsy store. I make these signs I send out to people to keep the Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons away. I also sell other stuff on there, so give it a look. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I need to ask something for you with polls is what I need to do. Get that out of here. I was trolling the internet the other day, like I do, and I came across a Mormon reacting to the South Park episode about Mormonism. Seemed interesting, so I figured I'd take a look from an ex-Jehovah's Witnesses perspective. So this is an ex-Jehovah's Witness reacting to a Mormon reacting to things. Yes, I stole that from Polygia, but he doesn't have a copyright on going meta as fuck. Anyways, let's get into it. Don't even think about it. It's a big long intro, so I'm not gonna bother listening to it. Let's just get into Damn. the first clip. The book of Mormon, what's that? You know, the book that Joseph Smith found. Oh, it's Joseph Smith. Okay, so Joseph Smith found the Book of Mormon, but he didn't write it, guys. So I'm, I'm excited stupid. to see like, what they're gonna say about it. My, also, they've done they analysis on the up. Book of Mormon and the different books that are in them. Oh and no, they hell no! You ain't that the actual shit. books were written by 15 different authors because there's 15 different books in the Book of Mormon. Their writing styles are so different, and so Joseph Smith actually couldn't have written the entire Book of Mormon himself. Who proved it was written by 15 different authors? Was it peer reviewed by the wider scientific community, or was it just claimed by the Mormon Church? Now I'm no literary analysis expert, far from it, but I do happen to know the history of the Book of Mormon. The idea, which we'll get into a little bit more later, is that Joseph Smith was told where to find some buried golden plates. He dug them up and found a seer stone there with them. Nobody ever saw the gold plates. He hid them from the public. And there was so much outrage and suspicion over the fact that nobody had ever seen them that he eventually had to do something about it. He got like 10 close friends and family members to sign a piece of paper saying, yeah, I saw the plates. They're 100% totally legit and not made up. So if they were in another language, how'd he translate them? Did the dude even speak another language? I hear you asking. Well, voice in my head, I'll give you his explanation. He says he used that seer stone that came with the plates to quote-unquote translate. So there's a discrepancy between the official Mormon account of how he translated the plates and Joseph Smith's own descriptions. The Mormon church realizing how outrageous it is to believe that you can use a rock to translate an ancient book claims that the seer stone that came with the plates basically acted as glasses that he could put on and when he looked at the gold plates it would just appear in English through the glasses. But their story has changed over the years and Joseph Smith gave different explanations. At one point the commonly accepted explanation is that he threw a rock into a hat, put his face in the hat, and the rock told him what the Book of Mormon should say. The gold plates weren't even involved in that explanation. At another point, they said he would sit there at a table with a curtain between him and the actual writer, and he would dictate what the plates said to the person writing it on the other side, who, again, never saw the gold plates. There's a lot of weird stuff surrounding the story, but one thing I want to point out about this is the fact that this chick says there's been literary analysis done on the books, and it's been proven that they were written by different authors. I haven't seen this literary analysis, and I can't imagine it's been reviewed by people outside the Mormon Church. Yeah, enough I would love it if the people doing the analysis would tell us why the Book of Mormon quotes the Bible.